Hello and welcome to the third video in this series making Simple Flappy Robin for a browser using Cocos 2D JS JavaScript version and the Lite version of course. Okay this video uh, I want to actually get round to looking at how we detect touches on the screen and it's very simple and we're going to talk a little bit more about scaling because there's some really cool stuff that comes automatically with the scaling uh, st stuff inside the platform from Cocos 2D. You remember that we've got everything scaling to our aspect ratio inside. Well, the scaling also applies to touches and points on the screen, which is really, really useful for developing the app uh, later on, as you'll see. So detecting touches is very easy. I'm inside game.js. I'm just going to go into the on enter function and basically it's exactly the same API as the C++ version which uh, is by design I imagine so we have something called a CC event manager and we need to add a listener to this so we just call add listener and before I do anything else because I always get confused with braces and things let's just do this so we're okay so we have a set of arguments we add into our listener and we need to tell it after the arguments that this is the object we want to listen on for the touches and the arguments we need to add are the event that we're going to actually listen to and this is called a cc uh, event listener and it's called touch one by one and this will detect a finger touch and a mouse touch. And you can look in the touches test in the samples actually to get some uh, a good overview of all of the touches and things available. We want to say that we're going to swallow touches. No point otherwise. And then now there are three functions exactly the same as a C++. So we have on touch began, and it's going to be this, and on touch began. And then we have, oops, misspelled there, haven't I? I'm just going to, cut to copy this uh, three times, twice, sorry. Then we have on touch moved. And we have on touch ended. And I'll explain what these are as we implement them. So on touch moved and on touch ended. So we need now, because we're going to call these functions when we have a touch on the screen um, inside our game layer then we need to actually add to these functions as well so the first one is on touch began and obviously it's a function and it takes two arguments a touch and an event and we can use the event to get the object that's being touched if we want to reference properties on it the touch itself we can use then to get the location of the touch so i'll say var tp for a touch point equals touch and dot get location and we'll just put to the uh, the console then very quickly also our point so we'll just say that uh, touch began oh, we'll call it on touch began shall we just to be complete so on touch began and then we'll say tp.x and we'll just use two fixed and just fix it to 2dp in fact we'll, no no we'll leave it to 2dp and then a comma and we just need our copy lazy and copy and paste this in here so we've got the Y of our touch point. And now what we can do then is just copy and paste this twice. Don't forget the commas, otherwise things will go wrong. And then we want untouch moved and untouch ended. Very good. Okay, so we can now have a very quick look then in the browser at exactly how these are working because now touches are fully detected. The only thing we need to add is in the on touch began a return true, and I'll explain why. So if I refresh the browser and touch, you can see that with a mouse click I got an on touch began and an on touch ended. And what happened was when the mouse went down, or your finger goes down on the screen, on touch began is called at the point that was touched. When the finger is list lifted or the mouse button non not pressed anymore, then on touch ended is called, and obviously it's exactly the same point in this case because we didn't move anything. If, however, I hold the mouse button down or hold a finger on the screen and now drag, you can see on touch moved is being called, and then if I lift the button, finally on touch ended at the last point we moved to. So we have on touch began, moved, and then ended, like so. So that's how that uh, works. Very, very simple, very easy to detect to your point that's been touched on the screen. Something that's interesting is if we change this to return false, you might be wondering why we might want to do that, 
Well, this will say that we don't want to detect or do anything with the touch. So if I put the mouse down and click, we get OnTouch began. But you notice, even though I've lifted the button, we didn't get an OnTouch ended. It's because we said we don't want to process any further this touch because we've returned false. Also, if I drag around the screen, I've got the mouse button held down. There's no OnTouch moved appearing. So if we want to process the touch, we use true. In our case, we're going to leave it as false because we simply want to detect the tap on the screen when the touch starts. And we'll deal with the processing of the touch slightly di differently later on. What is also really interesting, though, is you'll notice here if I click on the center of the screen, it's saying I've clicked at point 487 by 320, more or less the middle. Now, you remember that the width is 960, so the width of our uh, the middle of our screen is more or less 480. So this is saying I've touched in the middle of the screen. We're also 640 high, 329s more or less. But if I now resize the browser and click in the center of the screen, we still get, so here 470 and 330. So even though the browser size is completely different, the game canvas size is a lot smaller than we actually intend for our ideal resolution, the points we're getting back are scaled um, the points we receive back are based on our original intended scale and this is very very useful because the danger of somebody playing your game in a browser of course is that they can resize the browser at any time and carry on playing and that can mess up some of your variables for example in the robin game I don't know if you've seen it but this is the floor here when the robin falls to the floor we detect a hit on the floor when he gets halfway through the height of the floor now if we set the height of the floor when the game loads and then the size of the floor is changed by resizing the browser, then obviously the height of the floor is not going to be correct anymore for detecting the middle of the floor. Well, actually, it will be correct because it's always based around our original design resolution size. So that's really, really useful um, and makes things a lot easier in terms of scaling for the game. Now, I could demonstrate that very quickly, actually, by just very quickly saying what the, showing what the height of the floor is. So we've got our floor defined here with this uh, floor. So what we'll do is, inside in touch began here, we'll just say console.log, and we'll get the floor height. So we'll just say floor and height, like so. And now what we want to do is we need to get our current target. So we say, let's say, var target equals and it's event dot get current target so the current thing that was touched now we can use tar to call the variables on our game layer so it's tar um, dot underscore floor and we're going to call height here so we get the height of the floor like so so we've got floor dot height and I'm not too sure exactly I think that's actually an integer, so we can just leave it like so. So if I just refresh, and now you can see it's saying the floor height is 96. And if I resize the browser now, it's still saying when I touched that the floor height is 96. So we don't need to worry about the problems or issues with the browser being resized with the scaling of our points, which is a really, really useful thing. And in fact, one more thing I could do is actually move the position of the floor so I could say uh, target.floor.setPosition and I could set this position then to our touch point X by Y. Now remember it'll be the bottom left corner on the floor, it doesn't matter. And then we can actually print out the position of the floor as well. So we'll do this like this. So we'll just do uh, floor.position and then we want our tar floor.x and our tar.floor.y like so. I've just got a bit off the screen. And again, you'll see that the position of the floor will be set with our original attended scale. So now the floor's moved as I've touched the screen, but you can see the position is 500 by 400. Now if I make the screen tiny, and you can see at the top very quickly there, it was telling us that the screen is around 400 pixels wide by 400 tall. I click in the middle, well it's telling me the middle is 500, the middle, so 1000 wide is nearly our tension, 276. So the floor is being positioned, its height's always 96, but the API or the framework is dealing with the scaling for us, which means we need to work only in our intended um, scales, which makes things very, very easy uh, to set up. So I'll just remove this code from changing the, the position of the floor now. I'll leave this get current target in because we'll need it anyway. 
and just remove this code here and I'll keep the on touch began for now for reference for later just refresh the game make sure everything looks okay good it does okay then so that's it then for this video it's a bit quick but um, you can see that detecting touches is very very easy and in the next game we can finally move on to maybe adding the robin and set it, starting to set the, uh, set the meat and potatoes of the game up so thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one